All right, in this video, we'll talk about solving equations with square roots. And here's our example problem. 25x squared equals 36. I'm going to use this example to demonstrate two important techniques for solving equations like this. Notice that the variable, and that's what we're trying to find. We're trying to solve the equation, which means finding x. We want to find a value for x. The variable that we're trying to find is squared. And in many cases, we can find the answer by doing something involving a square root. Now, the first method I'm going to show you is really simple. Watch this. To find x, we simply isolate x. So the first thing we need to do is divide both sides by 25. And on the left, the 25s cancel out, leaving us with x squared all by itself. So x squared is 36 over 25. Now to solve this we need x, so right now we have an x squared. We just follow the basic principle of algebra and the, the, the fundamental concept in algebra is that you can do pretty much whatever you want to do to an equation as long as you do exactly the same thing to both sides. So we saw back earlier in the course for example that you can take an equation and add the same thing to each side or subtract the same thing from each side or multiply both sides by the same thing. Well, it's also true with square roots. We can take the square root as long as we do the square root of both sides. So we do the square root of the left and the square root of the right. And on the left, we have the square root of x squared, which is just x. And that was our goal, to find x. And so x equals whatever we get over here on the right-hand side. And on the right-hand side, these numbers work out nicely. This example was chosen deliberately for that to be the case. We have a 36, which is a perfect square, and a 25. When we square root the 36, we just get a 6. And when we square root the 25, we get a 5. So we have a 6 in the numerator and a 5 underneath. But don't forget the plus or minus. The square root of 36 could be 6 or negative 6. And the square root of 25 could be 5 or negative 5. So the answer is plus or minus 6 fifths. And if you wanted to, you could write that as a decimal, plus or minus 1.2. Okay, that's one technique for solving an equation like this. That won't work every single time. But for a lot of equations, you can do that. You can simply isolate the x or isolate the variable and find that the variable is squared. So we can then solve it, solve for that variable by taking the square root of both sides. Now watch me. Uh, solve the same equation a slightly different way. And this way is going to be a little bit longer, but the technique is very important to know and understand. The equation is this, 25x squared equals 36. I'm going to collect all the terms on one side, leaving a zero on the other. And in this case, to do that, I just subtract 36 from each side. And you can see that those will cancel out. And I get 25x squared minus 36 equals 0. So the point here is to have something that equals 0. And then try to take this expression and factor it. And remember uh, our factoring the difference of two squares. In general, a squared minus b squared can always be written as a plus b times a minus b we're going to apply that concept to this expression. So this can be factored as 5x plus 6 times 5x minus 6. And then we still have this equals 0. So 25x squared minus 36. The 25x squared was 5x squared and the 36 was the 6 squared. So because it's the difference of two squares, it can factor like that. If you don't quite get that, then do a FOIL on these, and you'll get this. Now, here's the important point. This, this solution is a little bit longer than the previous one, but this point here is the key point to understand. Note that I have two factors right here multiplied together, and they equal 0. That will be true if either factor is equal to 0. That's always the case. If you have a, well, let's use some different numbers. Say m times n equals 0. This equation will be true if m is 0. And it doesn't matter what n is. As long as m is 0, m times n will be 0. And it will also be true if n is 0. 
regardless of what value you have for m. As long as n is 0, that's 0. So if either one of these is 0, then it will be true, regardless of what the other one is. That same concept applies here. 5x plus 6, if that is 0, then it doesn't matter what this works out to be. The whole thing multiplied together will be 0. So 5x minus 6 will also give us a true statement here if 5x minus 6 is 0. In other words, if we have a value for x plugged in here that makes this factor 0, then 0 times anything over here is going to give us a 0 for the answer. So in other words, I can take this and make two little simpler equations. I can say 5x plus 6 equals 0. If that's true, then this overall equation will be true. And I can also say 5x minus 6 equals 0. And if that, if, if that is true, then this whole equation will be true as well. So let's solve each of these. And these are easy. Let's just move the 6 over there and make it negative. So this becomes 5x equals negative 6. And then divide both sides by 5. And we get x is negative 6 fifths. And do the same thing here. Take this 6 and put it over on the right side and make it positive. And we get 5x equals 6. And then divide both sides by 5 and we get x is positive 6 fifths. So here are two answers. And what this means is, let's look at this one. If we put in a negative 6 fifths for x right there, then that factor will work out to be 0. This factor won't, but it doesn't matter. 0 times this will, in fact, be 0. And then the same thing happens with this factor over here. If we put in a 6 fifths for x right there, then this factor works out to be 0. So that 0 times whatever this other factor is will, in fact, give us 0 for an answer. That technique of factoring something and then recognizing that this factor being 0 or that factor being 0 will make the equation true gives us two simpler equations that we can use to find two solutions. And notice, of course, that these two solutions, negative 6 fifths and positive 6 fifths, are the same as the two solutions we got earlier. That was our earlier work. See the plus or minus 6 fifths for our answer. Now again, this, this method right here is longer. But some, some problems need to be solved using this method, collecting all the terms on one side and then factoring and then finding an answer from each factor. So that's a very important technique to understand and also understand why it works. It works because if this is 0, the result is 0. And if this is 0, then the result of multiplying those is 0. So factoring and setting the factors equal to 0, very important technique.